Hello. I am right now. I am at Rolling Greens Golf Course near Lloydminster, Alberta. And I am going to do a Facebook Live here with my friend Pastor Derek Schneider from Oshawa, Ontario. And uh, really looking forward to having him in Lloyd Minster in October. And it is a great fall day here in Alberta. Uh, you guys probably know by now I live uh, in, near Lloyd Minster. And Lloyd Minster is a border city. Uh, of course, it's bordering Saskatchewan and Alberta. And my church that I pastor, the church I pastor, is uh, the Ark Foursquare Church in Lloydminster. It's on the Saskatchewan side, and I live in Alberta, on the Alberta side, which it actually takes me 15 minutes to get to my church. So um, it's not uh, very far at all. And of course, the golf course here is in Alberta. It's a beautiful fall day in Alberta. It's just gorgeous. Kind of looks like this tree is like coming out <laughs> behind my head here. But uh, you guys, I have a special guest here. I'm going to bring him on in a minute. Uh, Pastor Derek Schneider. He pastors History Makers Church in Oshawa, Ontario. I was fortunate enough to go and visit them this August. I had to go and check them out to see if they were legit or not. I'm just totally kidding there. And they totally are legit. They are a Holy Spirit filled church. They are amazing. Um, they invited me with open arms. In fact, it was the warmest welcome that I think I've ever received ever when I've gone and traveled uh, to different churches. Their uh, hospitality is second to none. They were such a warm, welcoming church when I went and just blessed me and honored me and accommodated me in every way. They, um, yeah, just an amazing church. So congratulations, Pastor uh, Schneider, on leading well and um, uh, yeah, just had a really great, um, Derek, if you want to just say hi again there and I'll bring you on. I don't want to delay this, uh, this Facebook Live any longer. Um, yeah, here, that's fantastic. I'm gonna bring Pastor Derek on. And uh, History Makers Academy, because it is coming to Lloyd Minster. Yeah. Ah, there Did he get is. It? Awesome, <laughs> looking great, brother. Thank you. I'm, uh, I wanted to match the trees behind you. Yes, so. there we go. We're going camel, camouflage. You could just like actually hide yourself in this tree behind me. <laughs> no one would even know you were there. And in fact, that's not a bad idea because pastors need rest. We need naps. And sometimes it's good to just escape into nature and uh, I'm, hide I, yourself. I'm just Jesus picturing myself hiding in a tree in Lloydminster. Jesus went off and hid and went into isolated places. <laughs> yeah. So I was just saying, you are coming to Lloydminster. You're coming back to Lloydminster because you were here last October, I think. Yeah. It was sometime in the fall. And it was a really, those were some powerful meetings. And the whole time I was there, I was thinking, this place is set up so well foundationally. We have to do a training here. And I got really excited, but sometimes, you know, churches get excited, but the follow through, the price you pay to be equipped and sent, I, I didn't know if it would happen. And I have seen that Apostle Lisa, Pastor Lisa is a true soldier in this thing, a true laborer. What she says she's going to do, she does. And by I'm the way, business. yeah, as, sorry, I'm talking so much. I, I have my coffee here, but oh. by the way, uh, thank you for saying such nice things about our church. Uh, for our people that see that, you know, um, a, a lot of people don't realize the culture of honor <clears throat> is one of the most important aspects you can have within an apostolic 
center or anything apostolic. The glue that holds it together is honor. And we so seldom major on that. But if you wonder why the connectivity needed apostolically to bring massive breakthroughs isn't there, you'll always find the absence of honor. Yeah, that is so good. And uh, I love it. Like there is a reward when you give honor. There is a reward. And so great is your reward because you guys do such a great job of it. Yeah, so good. Well, I met you and talked to you like last year, kind of, we started to, to, uh, to connect. And, um, I, um, I was seeing some similarities in our DNA and I was like, Hey, God is really bringing together like-minded people because there needs to be a great impact in the nation of Canada. There needs to be that synergy, that coming together, the one accord. I believe in all of that. It is so powerful and impactful and there's lasting fruit from it. And so, you know, I grew up in the church and I, and you did too, Pastor Derek, We've been to a lot of conferences. We've been to <laughs> camps. We've been to crusades. We've been to campaigns. We've been to events. We've been to all these things, right? These trainings and seminars and worship schools. And, and there's nothing wrong with those. Um, they're amazing. I love it. I've, I, love, I love all of that. But the thing that I leave unsatisfied with is the aftermath. The, okay, what now? So yes. what? Now what? Now yeah. what do we do? We are, we are trained. We're going to get equipped. Now what? Do we just continue to puce it and just come, come to our Sunday morning service, go home and eat our turkey dinner and, you know, roll around on the couch because you've eaten too much, you know, all Sunday <laughs> afternoon and then just go and live like you normally do from Monday to Saturday and then Sunday morning comes around again. I'm just not satisfied with that anymore. And I don't think that the body of Christ in the nation of Canada is anymore either. I feel like we're finding our voice. We're, we're wanting to be motivated. We're wanting to be activated. We want to be part of a company of people that are activating and sending people out. And so I looked at my website, the church website here in Lloydminster, the ARC website. It's, um, arcloydminster.ca and on the front page this is what it says it says the arc follows the pattern found in ephesians 4 verse 11 with the apostles and prophets being the foundation and christ being the chief cornerstone and there's also reference to that in ephesians 20 uh, ephesians 2 verse 20 the ark exists to equip to train and to unite the church of this generation in revelation, impartation, and activation. There's that activation part for the end time harvest because the end time harvest is now. It's today. Today is the day of salvation. Um, it goes on to say, our goal is to equip a supernatural laboring force to see revival reform our city. Not to just see revival. An experience revival, yay, yay, rah, rah, I feel so on fire now, I'm in revival. No, but to see rev revival reform our cities, our towns, our villages, our hamlets, our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplaces, our nation of Canada, and even the nations of the world, because yeah. that is a prophetic mandate on the nation of Canada, is that we will be healing to other nations. We will be impacting other nations. So get ready, people, get ready for international ministry, not just local ministry or community ministry. That's good. Yes, if you're sent there, amen, great. But you could be sent to provinces to impact provinces in Canada or um, the nation or even nations to be sent to nations. And then it goes on to say, um, we do this through inter in, in, um, itinerant ministry, missions, marketplace ministers. We do, do conferences, training schools, and providing resource materials to people. And so that's what sets us apart from churches in our city. Um, and 
when I, I was reading this, I was like, this is the same <coughs> DNA that you're carrying, Derek. This is the same, like History Makers Academy, for all of those who don't know uh, what this is all about, they're going to know after today's Facebook Live, but it is a cutting edge training and equipping movement designed to, now listen to some of this wording, it's very similar to what I just read about the ARC, Foursquare Church, um, to awaken believers to God and his purposes for them to equip them strategically for result oriented effective ministry and to send them into their place of calling with practical and supernatural empowerment. Mm. Ooh, I just get excited about that. And so the mission of history makers is to awaken, to equip and to send. I love it. Because we always talk about in our church that we're here to train, equip, and send. And so very similar. I might have to change ours to awaken, uh, do equip, it. and send. You go I, I love that. I love that. I love it. And, and uh, boy, we need an awakening. The le uh, so uh, we're, we're going to send them out to their sphere of calling and to strengthen the local church and to transform society. Is just if you're, if, you're, if you're impacting your church in, in your church family, that's one thing. But to take it to the streets is a whole other level. And that's exactly the mandate that Jesus commissioned us with. He, in Matthew, go, Matthew 16, go into all the world, right? And so I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get you to share some. <laughs> tell us, tell our viewers, I hope that people would share this out. If you're watching today and you're in the Lloydminster area, even within a two hour radius of Lloydminster, and you think that maybe you might be able to come out in October to Lloydminster to experience this for yourself, please like comment and like and share this video out. Uh, even if you're not watching live, even if you're watching the replay, uh, I want you to share this out because the content here will be more than likely something that you've never heard before. This is cutting edge it's new for me so if it's new for me to somebody who is like a seasoned conference goer <laughs> it'll be new to you too so like what is history makers training wow well great introduction i could go back and watch that intro lisa that was loaded, but um that was a 30 second prep believe me <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my goodness <laughs> oh jesus is proud of you. <laughs> you anointing know, fall <laughs> we, we have been endeavoring to answer that question of how to describe this thing what some people say is they call it a point of no return where in the training and and we we intentionally choreograph it's a three-day training you know dr carolyn leaf says it takes approximately three and a half days to shift the mindset. What we found in the church today was there's no shortage of teaching, preaching, all this kind of great stuff, worship, prayer, prophecy. But we saw that the problem wasn't so much with God. He's ready to send revival. It's revival now. And the problem wasn't so much with the devil. He was defeated at the cross. The problem was with our mindsets, our stinking thinking. And that if you could deal with the mindset of believers and help them to make that shift, we saw that there was just activation immediately. So where, where this began for us was we were having incredible revival meetings for close to eight years at our church. I mean, we had the services that, that we're talking about, the services that we love. Most people probably within the viewership base that are watching right now, you know what I'm talking about. But it, it, it one day felt like the scales were taken off my eyes that the God of the universe was visiting our building on a weekly basis and the city barely had any idea we existed. And the gap, just to cut a long story short, the gap between what we do in our churches, gatherings, conferences, and society where the people really are is vast. And, and we found you could hold all the prayer meetings do all the prophetic acts and declarations you wanted, it wasn't enough. And I know this is hard 
to hear, but it wasn't enough to fill Good. the gap between in-house and where people really are. And so after a season of prayer, the Lord had mercy on us in the form of this history makers training. And I realized it didn't matter how many people we had in our church, whether a thousand or 150, if you could properly train and equip a handful of laborers, you could absolutely impact society. I was waiting for people to come flooding to our church. It wasn't happening. Your parents prayed for that. Their parents prayed for that. We're always waiting for them to come in from the Northeast, South and West. And, and while we're waiting, they're out there dying. And so I realized that we would have to go to them. But the task of awakening, equipping yeah. <laughs> and sending was yeah. massive. So here was, yeah. my, here was my first hurdle was I knew we had to awaken, equip, send. We had to do more than just gatherings and meetings. So I tried to do that on Sundays as a pastor. I tried to awaken them with big, long sermons. And lots of altar time. We had more great altar time. Awaken. I tried to equip them by preaching for two hours instead of one. You know, seven points on national transformation. And I just found people just left, went to a church. Where and then when they fell asleep, you just got louder. Yeah. <laughs> That's my, that's my, I'm like, just start with the intonation of my voice. Just go higher in your pitch. So they yeah, wake up. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to force you out, you know, and, and just, it, it, it wasn't really happening. The sending part just usually is approximately two to 5% of your church, not to throw too much out here, but two to 5% of your church naturally are active out in the community. It's the that's other wow. one. Yeah, it's true. And any pastor watching this knows what I'm talking about. And so it, 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 it's the factor of, of the sending piece that we were missing. So you think your mind goes to, well, we need to pray harder, or your mind goes to, well, we need to hold a conference. And then everybody goes into conference mode, which really is consumer mode. You're coming to the conference to get something, encounter something, receive something, hear something. And in Canadian comfort-based conference culture, I'm sorry, Lisa, I didn't mean for this to be so loaded tonight here. No, but that's good. good. Canadian comfort-based conference culture, we're now conditioned to need to hear something new, have another experience. And I love experiences. I will roll around on the floor. I'm a holy roller, holy, I, I need a touch from God. But it still wasn't answering the sending piece because now we're just waiting for the next conference. And so God had mercy on us in the form of this three-day training. And I know that's hard to believe. You're saying, Pastor, you can answer this in three days. Listen, we have a track record with this thing. That's why it's called the ultimate result-oriented machine. That's offensive to really spiritual people. But a lot can happen in three days. Talk to Jonah. A lot happened in three days in the belly of a whale. Talk to Jesus. A lot can happen in three days. And so... We call this by official name uh, a, a uh, specially choreographed, spirit-filled environment. It's an environment, not a conference. It's mm -hmm. designed to bring you to the end of your own abilities. So you have to access supernatural power to complete the training. It's a yeah. total rewiring. Mm -hmm. It just is. And mm -hmm. so when when you want to separate ministry in your own strength to accessing what the giants of God, the generals of the faith access, yeah. they'll all tell you the same story. Catherine Kuhlman says, I'll show you where I died. Mm -hmm. And then there's been a great. So Apostle Paul talked about this. He said, there was a thorn in my side. I prayed that God would remove it. But, you know, he still got it. And, and he said that, God, would you remove this from me? I'm paraphrasing. And, and the Lord said to him, uh, my grace is sufficient for, for thee, for power is perfected in weakness. So mm -hmm. supernatural apostolic grace. Like, let's talk real for a moment. The mm -hmm. grace on true apostles to touch nations 
and regions and, and sectors of society. You cannot buy that. You cannot work hard enough for it. You can't, you know, this is a gift from mm -hmm. our chief apostle, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul says, oh, by weakness, I access that power. History makers training pulls you into an environment that makes you weak in your own abilities to where you begin to access God's ability right there on site. You make the shift from your default of doing everything in your own strength to learning how to, in your weakness, access that grace and apostleship, Romans 1 that Paul talked about. So the, re the end result of that is we have so many testimonies, I mean hundreds of them, maybe more than that by now, of people coming through this three-day destiny doorway and boom, they're promoted at their work. Boom, they get a download, a destiny wow. download of what program or ministry they're to start. And when they start it, it has these off the charts results. Or people who are, who are currently in ministry, they come out of that training and boom, there's growth. Yeah. And there's, what is it? And they think it's training, but it's actually the grace that Apostle Paul laid his hands on through weakness. We, Simulate this mission experience. So, you know, we had one woman, Marguerite McLeod, who, who came through the training and we teach system building, like how to reach 10,000 people in your city in two years. You know, all this big apostolic stuff is, is a section of the three-day training. And so she created a curriculum. The Lord told her, don't fight the education system. Mm -hmm. Don't fight with these people, but create a curriculum that educates families and how to send their children into the corrupt school system, bringing the light. You know, yeah. who's, th that could only come from somebody who knows they are greater than the darkness that's mm -hmm. in. So she created this curriculum, and in six months' time, it was in over 30 nations. Now it's, I think, in over six, whatever, however many nations. And you're thinking, where's this fertilizer coming from? Yeah. It's the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. If you'll allow me to say, Pastor Lisa, we've gotten really good at doing ministry in our own strength. We don't like to admit that, but we work the, the charismatic ladders. We get into the green room. It's who you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to speak up too much about this because I've got to keep my network happy. And we, we use all these worldly tools other than death other than surrender yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. this three-day training takes you into the grave into the belly and wow. reaches you with wow. the grace also paul walked in and i'm not ashamed to say it because we have even leaders gatekeepers in nations yeah a few of them who have said history makers training was the catalyst that took us towards real steps towards the transformation of our nation Wow, that is huge. That statement alone is just huge, is just ginormous. My goodness. I'm sorry I um, all that, but. No, that, that was okay. question number one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, you know what? As you were talking to, when you were saying three day experience, I, I want to emphasize that people who are planning to attend will have to register because we want you to invest in yourself. We want you to invest. Uh, you, we want you to invest into ministry. Um, we want you to register for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and to uh, plan to attend all three days. That means you need to get a babysitter and you need to pay your babysitter. Well, <laughs> uh, you need to, um, take time off of work. You need to um, do whatever you need to do. Pre-prep -pre your meals so that your teenage kids at home have something to eat. Well, you need to plan for this because this is an investment into you. This is um, going to be huge. It's going to transform you, your ministry, your impact. <laughs> it's going to put you into who you've called, who God wow. has called you to be. And so I really want to emphasize that. I'll be talking to my congregation about that is that don't just 
register and say, I'm going to come Friday or I'm going to come Saturday morning. No, clear your schedule. This is a weekend for yourself. This is a, a spa for your soul and, and for your heart and for your, you know, your spirit. And, um, and this is something that you can do with your uh, spouse or your um, brother, sister, your family, your bring your mom and dad, your grandma, whoever, like bring some friends with you so that um, you can share this experience with them so that they'll go through it with you because I don't think it's something that we can actually explain to people like you know the encounters are so individual and so impactful uh, that you know if you go through it alone, I don't know if you'd ever be able to explain it to your friends and family like guys like you missed out and so we don't want people to miss out on this weekend. You're coming all the way from Ontario uh, to spend time with us. And uh, we want to make it worth your while. We want you to have people to teach. But we want, I was telling you this earlier, Pastor Derek, um, when I was talking to you earlier today, is that there is a gold mine in, in my city. I believe that there are people walking around with gold in them. Mm. And they are so valuable the kingdom i want to invest in them i want to be a conduit for god to work through me to 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 um impart to these people to train equip and to send them out you know i don't want them to just be these treasure chests that are locked up i want to open the treasure chest up and pull the gold out of people and uh get them you know operating in the gifts and operating into the fivefold ministry you know commission them out and so um, Karen, I see, is asking, when is this happening? So uh, in Lloyd Minster, it will be happening at the Ark Church, October 13th, 14th, and 15th. It's a three-day training. And um, we were, we've been talking about personal um, uh, impact, but also international impact and breakthrough. Tell us a little bit about that. Pastor Derek, about some personal and some international breakthroughs that have happened with this training. Like you mentioned a couple stories already, but um, yeah. You know, um, talking about treasure within people, I'll give a personal example, then international, because we do have, like I said, several nations, real shifts, you know, not just declaring a shift, but tangible change. Um, as, as you would expect that from, from Jesus, our chief apostle, working through people. This is that. But I remember this First Nations man who came from the reserve, and he was in one of these trainings. And the challenge was there's writing, there's reading, and he was borderline illiterate, uh, maybe even more than that. I just try to, like, downplay the drama of the story, but borderline illiterate. And, and we watch in this training. People start to relinquish the do it in my own strength thing we talked about. And you can watch as they're making that shift, we actually track it. We have a team that is looking at the homework assignments and, and all of that. And you can watch them begin to step into that apostolic grace where they begin to do more supernaturally than they ever thought of right there on site. It's like an open heaven. And this particular man... Uh, and I checked this thing out. I did my homework on this to find out about this guy. He began to read and write right there on site and scored some high number. Uh, he went from the training and founded a church on the reserve and actually entered politics. Um, it's one of these again, the, the gospel of the kingdom, total transformation when that apostolic grace gets on you. But when I, when I dug into this with him, he was barely able to read and write, but it, it, it revealed religiosity in me because I thought, oh, come on, you know, can't read and write. Are you saying it's a miracle, it's supernatural? And, and I realized that Jesus can read and write perfectly. The Jesus in him knows how to read and write as mm -hmm. it is in heaven. If they write in heaven, they know they write perfect. They can read and write in heaven as it is in heaven became a reality right there on site. That's what Jesus intended us to function from in ministry until the city says, these are the ones that have turned the whole world upside down. These people, mm -hmm. this is a result oriented gospel. 
I, I look at my nation and I see a country almost frozen in time, frozen in a holding pattern of something's coming, but not yet. And I, I weep, especially as of late, that we have de defaulted to every type of form of mysticism, every type of thing to try to work a formula that will get God to bring the results. He's wanting you to go and get. And so when we properly train and equip laborers, you don't have that problem anymore. Yeah, you do prophetic acts, you prophesy, all of that, but it's not the main thing. You're out there performing acts and exploits of apostle, of real, you know, whatever sector you're in. So Bulgaria is one of our best case studies because I've done now 14 history makers trainings there in various cities. They were just so desperate for change. And what I discovered was the sent ones are sitting in your congregation. God sent you the sent ones, Pastor. The problem is we think as pastors that ministry is getting them to come, getting them to sit, getting them to listen, and ensuring through our systems and programs that they come back next week and do it all over again, which all of that is part of what we do. But I discovered that within each person in the church is a blueprint, a, a calling, a treasure that if equipped and awakened and released properly, they can go where you, the pastor, cannot go. They can go yeah. and reach people as the church. The church then ceases to be something with walls. You may have a building that you gather in and celebrate and swing from the chandeliers and have potlucks. That's all good. But the church is no longer limited to that because your people are strategically out there organizing the kingdom. Organized righteousness is greater than organized crime. And you're bringing a systemic kingdom effect on the society around you. So in Bulgaria, we had done so many trainings. There were so many history makers being released that the, um, the leader, he's the director of the European Judges and Lawyers, whatever. You know, I'm not the most educated, but judges, lawyers, something. And he said to me over breakfast, first of all, it was on, an honor to sit with this guy. Wow. And he said, you've been able to do more for Bulgaria through these trainings than any wow. of us have done who exist here, who live here. Right. Yeah. And so he invited me to speak at the European Judges and Lawyers Convention. And he asked to speak on the role of truth in rebuilding a society so like basically discipling nations but you know and so what i did i don't know what to say to hundreds of judges and lawyers but i shared on truth and and discipling nations for half an hour i had another half hour and i just brought up bulgarian graduates who had started ministries for single mothers, who had started ministries in this sector, drug addict, this sector, that sector. I put our graduates on the stage, and I'll never forget this, Lisa, and since then, I will not settle for anything less from the church in Canada. I won't. I saw a corporate aha from these judges and lawyers who are not Christian yeah. Yeah. that, oh my my gosh, the church could rebuild the country. The church can change the country. Forget that, you know, the government, God bless you, but the church, each person Amen. in their speech, organizing the kingdom, sent from society. There's one of our graduates right there from Bulgaria, believe it or not, Mitko Jenk. And I'm so glad he's hitting the thumbs up because it's a sign. He's testifying to the reality of this. How his wife, oh, his, it's so good that you're watching. His, his wife is one of our graduates and she was praying to God, take me out of this ghetto I live in. I, I don't like the people around me. There's poverty. She kept saying, God, you know, and this is like the Canadian church. Give us more comfort. Yeah. Give me something. And then she realized in the history makers training that God wanted her to stay there 
and minister to these drug addicted families, families impacted by drug addicts. And she has a thriving ministry to families now. Wow. With a story about this. And so when I, when, I, when I look at Canada, I say, man, we're as effective as we've been willing to labor for. If all you're doing is gathering and praying and prophesying and keep doing that, I do that. I believe in it. But if that's where it stops, yeah. even if you find the strong man, yeah, exactly. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I fully agree with everything you said. And you know what? You hit a bit of a nerve with me in a good way. When you said the church can change the nation, because as you know, most of the viewers here today are probably from Canada, uh, 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 besides some of our guests there from Bulgaria. But um, <laughs> our prime minister deemed churches non-essential in the last couple of years that needs to change and i believe derek with this training and the continual facilitation of of the training equipping and sending that in the future there will be no room for our politicians for for our prime minister to even think that our nation that our churches are non-essential they will look and see that you know oh yeah and I, see that we are powerhouses we're world shakers we're you know what it's yeah i had i had um i want to be careful because it's it is sen it is sensitive <laughs> it's sensitive I'm not, I'm not angered by a very unsaved politician saying the church is not essential in Canada. That didn't anger me. That made me think, all right, let's show you how essential we are. Let's, let's get doing some things in our communities that make us absolutely just a yeah. um, same thing in the GTA, they no longer allow you to buy land to build churches on. Right. And and when all the pastors got together and they were all horrified by this, I was thinking and and they didn't get it at first, but yeah. but I ended up yeah. sharing with them that yeah. listen yeah. for why, the unsaid. Why, why would they uh, land to you? What are you doing? What are you doing for the nation? Doing? What are you doing for your city, your community? Yeah. Yeah, all they saw were half filled buildings that are open once a week or twice a week yeah. for Bibles. And meanwhile you other organizations in the community that are so active in bringing values mm -hmm. that they get priority over us and mm -hmm. so this is after mm -hmm. history makers was designed to shift the 90 percent of the church that are bench warmers into major activity with the strategy and equipping on exactly how to do it yeah 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 totally um what is um what is some of the content that you're going to be covering when you come? Uh, like there's a Friday night session and morning. I think we're going to have lunch afternoon, oh. evening or something like that. Oh, sorry. Uh, Am I back now? Yeah, so you're back. We have a, yeah. Okay. We have a full day of training. We've got the Friday night and then Saturday, a full day. And then Sunday, I think as well. Um, what is some of the content like just don't don't give us all of it just give us a appetizer <laughs> yeah it's hard this is the hardest question when people ask this because when you name something that they're, they're like oh yeah, yeah i got i got that you know like character development or you know yeah. let me say it this way um some of it is what i said principles for city regional national transformation some of the other, though, has to do with the rewiring of you as a comfortable believer, teaching you how to create environment at home that is bringing out that treasure and that apostolic grace. Some of it is self-discovery in the assignments of, of what is holding you back in being able to. Some of it has to do with time management. We, we have some people weep 
when they find out according to the system, if I were to keep living the way I'm currently living, it would take me over 250 years to accomplish my calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Realize how much time is wasted when they do a time. And so, so there's that kind of stuff. There's the equipping for uh, the understanding of sonship, the understanding of this present church reformation, uh, how to reach a thousand people in two years. Um, there's some other stuff. I'm just not going to talk about it because you got to experience it. Um, because one thing builds on top of another, bringing you into points of revelation yeah. and broke. And then yeah. of course, the meeting with Jesus at the end. Yes. Tell us about that, or do we have to wait for the experience to? <laughs> Say that again. And sorry, it froze for a moment. Can you can you tell us about that, or do we have to wait? Do we have to register and find out for ourselves? Because I want to meet Jesus. <laughs> uh, you know, I already have. Um, guys. For those, those, yeah, yeah. For those who are um, who understand the apostolic you know that big fruit comes out of encounters with the person of Jesus. That's what I'll say, whether it's Apostle Paul or whoever else, that it comes out of encounter. So when they've come through this training, and they've got all these tools now, and they've, they've broken past the flesh and the limiting mindsets, and they've got this you know, acceleration, they're doing the supernatural, they, they know what to do when they come out of the training. Um, the meeting with Jesus is reintroducing them to the person of Jesus, the giver of this grace, the super on the, the natural. And, and right now, even, yeah, yeah, I got that. I, you know, you'll say I went to Bill Johnson school and I had this encounter on the floor. I get all that. It's all good. It's all good. But in an apostolic machine that's targeted for this, Jesus shows up in a very unique way. And it's rooted in some of, you know, history makers training was born out of this. The pain and pressure and encounters with Christ that bring you to your end and he ministers through you. Like I said about Catherine Coleman, I'll show you where I died. So one of the things that happens in the meeting with Jesus, and there's there's just no exaggerating here. There's no worship. There's no hyping something up. It's not a prayer meeting. But when we go into the meeting with Jesus within the first few minutes, that you'll often see weeping, sometimes travail, sometimes demonic manifestations as people who've gone to church for years but have clingy demons or possessive demons or whatever level you want to call it that starts to fly out because the presence of the person of Jesus it's a different anointing it's a different experience the presence of the person of Jesus walks into the room and and before long I mean Kleenex is is flying and what happens is people move into a point of surrender and we lead them in how to surrender on a level that is so deep when they come out after the meeting with jesus and they take a vow of silence that night they come out holding on to nothing only jesus wow. and wow. where i believe that grace that's doing all this in their lives that's where i believe that rests on them and and that's where it all begins wow that sounds amazing yeah i want to do that right now <laughs> i'm feeling wow. it I'm feeling it just... i know i'm like oh my goodness i i this couldn't this weekend can't come soon fast enough this is going to be fantastic like you've talked about the the um the like the uh, content like you're going to be releasing and just the the character development the transformation the dying to self which oh my goodness take up your cross and follow me right and uh just the crucifying of our flesh and our terrible bad habits that we have and 
and just to, you know, getting rid of idols and getting rid of all kinds of stuff that clutters and all kinds of stuff that, you know, um, is, is hindering our, our walk, our advancement, our uh, stepping into our destiny calling, all of that, like, oh my goodness, that sounds so good. But, but the, you know, if, when Jesus shows up, you know, I just think of that song. I, I don't know who writes it, but it's it. The lyric is, when you walk into the room, everything changes. You know, the darkness starts to fade away. The bad. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. And we just take on that newness that Jesus has has for us. And oh, my goodness, I just feel like people are going to have this Holy Ghost encounter that um, is going to be life changing. And not only for them, Derek, but I see in the spirit right now that it's going to be transformational for marriages, for their career uh, but for their children and their children's children's children, this is a generational blessing and impartation that is going to continue for decades to come. This is, you know, we, we talk about this during inner healing and deliverance sessions is, you know, when the person comes to get free, to get healing, it's not only for them. It's for their children and their grandchildren and their grandchildren. It is just I'm so excited. Wow. You this know, is I, a blessing. I, I was thinking about um, the meeting with Jesus, and you see why. <laughs> I'm not trying to touch anybody's sacred cows here, but you see why the conference can be so limiting as far as mass mobilization. Not always, but sometimes. And we often say because we're limited on a sunday morning we just are mm -hmm. pastors know that um history makers training will do in those three days what could take you two to three years if ever congregation and so let us do that i want to encourage pastors um to come to this i'm not going to play around with you 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 will come to this thing and you will walk away saying okay that i'm just that was what they said it was so I want to encourage pastors to come. As pastors, we tend to think there's nothing new under the sun. You know, we, hey, I went to seminary. I went to Bethel. I went to, you know, I, I want to encourage you to be hungry because this thing was born out of, God, there's got to be more than this. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage pastors to come. And then for, for average, I don't want to say average, but ordinary, you know, not, in non-leadership yet, leader non-leaders yet um for you to attend this thing because it will activate and accelerate something in you the first thing you're going to run into when you consider this training is fear that's the first mindset you're going to run into will be fear mm -hmm. trust me you'll find, find a million th reasons to get out of this thing uh you'll make all kinds of excuses because the, and that means the training has already begun it's doing what it's supposed to do this is the Navy SEAL stuff. Secondly, you might say, I'm not academic. I heard there's reading and there's writing. Listen, nobody is grading you on grammar or it's all about heart. So let me just take that excuse off the table. And then uh, thirdly, I would say to you that the third thing you're going to run into is religiosity. And it'll be a form of religion that will say, I've got enough. I I'm good. No, I'm fine. Basically, what you're saying is, I'm no longer hungry because I've built my box to put Jesus in. J just admit it. You become charismatic, religious. And, and that's the, th the third thing you'll run into is, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I I'm already there. I'm, I'm spiritual. I have out-of-body out of experiences, and I fly through the air. Good for you. S be so hungry that if something comes along that says what this says it does, run to that thing get equipped because what we and and i'll stop after this pastor lisa but what we as the canadian church have thought what we bought into was that the 
highest level of ministry is reaching God's heart with our heart. But in actual reality, the highest level of ministry in God's eyes is reaching people with his heart. That's what the Good Samaritan is all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have neglected, we've been so... Mm -hmm. and, and don't get me wrong, your heart has to belong to God. That's, that's a, you've got to reach God's heart every day. Mm -hmm. But true ministry mm -hmm. is reaching people, Canada. It's not just yeah. a conference, it's yeah. not just a prayer meeting. I did carpet time again, 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 waiting, waiting. Someday, one day, the harvest is coming, it's harvest time. Reach with, yeah. with God's heart. Yeah. The things that are most important to his heart, reaching people that way. You can start having ministry results now, but you come through an equipping beast like this yeah. and you can accelerate the whole thing and God can use you now. What are mm -hmm. you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. And you know, as you were talking, I was just Did I freeze there? Oh, Pastor Derek, you're frozen now. Okay, just to love people, you know, as we love ourselves, just to love our neighbor and to, uh, yeah, and just if, if every Christian would do that, we would see transformation right there. Yeah. Um, just uh, coming back, just come back to the basics. Just do what the word tells you to do. Just do what God tells you to do. And yeah, um, yeah. no, that's good. I am uh, super excited. Oh, man, I'm so glad you spent time with us uh, this evening. It's uh, two hours ahead for you in uh, Ontario. And um, I know that you want to get uh, on with your evening and spend time with your family, your beautiful family, well, our, our, Sarah, Shiloh, Our team waiting for me. Shiloh. We have a meeting now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Our team is waiting for me. We have a meeting uh, oh. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. so hey. but I, you know, this is just the night of yeah. me. Just enjoying it. We're enjoying it. Okay. Well, say hi to them for us. Uh, and um, they're welcome to come visit us anytime. If they're out on wanting to travel to the mountains or something, tell them to pit stop at Pastor Lisa's church in Lloydminster. And I'll give them some coffee or hot chocolate and some, I don't know, apple strudels, whatever. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. Well, thank you so much. And God bless you. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be talking about the History Makers um, a, a training tonight at our meeting. And then uh, we're really going to start blasting it out on social media. So there'll be lots of uh, registration links uh, available to people. I'll be blasting that out on our ARC Facebook page, my Facebook page, and then the dates and everything. And so, um, again, just real emphasis on um block off that weekend for you yeah. and just determine in your heart even right now and commit in your heart right now i'm going to make an investment into myself with this and um i am going to um, make arrangements with my family my friends my job whatever you need to do do that even now because i think we're only four weeks out like we're it's almost a month away right so do that now look at after all the details, set aside the money, whatever. If you think you only, you know, it's $97 to register. That is wow. not much. Wow. That's affordable. Wow. Wow. Set the money. If you have to save from this paycheck and in two weeks, another paycheck, save that money, whatever. Borrow the money, you know, whatever you need to do. This is a huge investment. It's so important. It's going to be so impactful, like nothing you've ever experienced before. Again, cutting edge, uh, result orientated, effective ministry. I mean, yeah, yeah, we got to wrap this up. But I mean, it is it's so important. So I, I just call all of uh, Lloyd Minster and region to come um, and also the pastors too. You know, we saw several pastors come to the tent meetings. 
Pastor Derek, at one meeting, I think there were seven or even nine pastors in the tent meeting. Isn't that great? They're taking time to invest in themselves. And again, that humility, like we need to, we need to get something from this. We, I mean, we're coming hungry and, um, and they were just coming to receive and, and hear a word from the Lord. Uh, the tent meetings were just phenomenal. Sometimes we had 250 people in the tent and um, pastors and leaders from the community coming and, uh, and just receiving, it was such a family, like the body of Christ coming together in unity. And um, this is another opportunity, the History Makers Weekend, it's another opportunity for pastors and leaders to come and uh, come. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty, for they shall be filled. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Lisa. It's always an honor. God has <laughs> this nation with one great woman of God. So bless you. Oh, you. Know that you say hi and my family. And I think we might even take this video and, and cut it up and give you some little snippets of it to use. That's and let's, let's, God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Say hi to your family. Uh, Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone.